Hi, and welcome to The Wrongest of Ways. And today I'm going to tell you how electric unicycles turn and why. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. So I've been riding electric unicycles for over three years now, and I've tried several dozen of different types and sizes. And the thing that always keeps and the thing that always keeps amazing me about those devices is their turning. And while on other devices like scooters, e-bikes and, I don't know, skateboards, there's a lot more components and variables how you can change the turning behavior. On the UCs, you just don't have so many components. You don't have a wheelbase, you don't have uh, a head angle on your fork. And maybe most important of all, you just have one wheel. So while you can change the riding and turning experience by changing the height of the foot plates, having a different balance, different weight and weight distribution, a very important thing in the ride experience and turning experience on UCs is the tire. All right, but let's step back a little. How do these electric unicycles even manage to turn? Now look, I'm not a physicist, so I can't explain it maybe as properly in a scientific way. But what I can tell you is that the radius on the inner side of the tire is smaller than on the outer side of it. By applying force onto the electric unicycle, by balancing and shifting the weight onto one or the other side, you are forcing the tire to not go straight but turn as this would be the path of least resistance. But the way this electric unicycle will turn heavily depends on the tire that is mounted on it. And that is what we will talk about in this video. So first we will discuss the tire types, off-road tire, street tire, what are the differences. And later on we'll show the different behavior of different tires at different speeds. And yes, all of those things are different. And more nuanced things like tram tracking, wobbles, and behavior of the tire at different pressures. So it won't be as boring as I'm telling it now. Let's get into the video. So what can be different on a tire anyways? I found out for myself, and I might be wrong, that there are seven things that are variables there. Well, mostly seven things. The first thing is, of course, something that is always a selling point in electric unicycles, the tire diameter. So the bigger the tire diameter, the more smoother of a ride you will get, but also the more of a gyroscopic effect the tire or the whole wheel will have. So the faster you go, the more force you need to exert to turn and therefore you will have more stability but also more effort. With those bigger tires it will be also more difficult to accelerate. But that's not really about turning so let's move on to the next point. No it was about turning. It was. It was definitely about turning. The next thing to keep in mind and I think that is very very important is the tire width. In general the wider the tire the more turning abilities you'll have at lower speeds. It will have also more grip at higher speeds if you want to make sharper turns. But at the same time, it might be also more prone to tram tracking, more prone to wobbles and unexpected behavior. Take a look at the example here. Both of those wheels are 16 inch wheels, but I need to tilt the V8S a lot more than the 16X, which makes the V8S easier to scratch with the pedals. However, the 16X will require more effort in those turns. But of course, the width is not the only thing that changes that. But in general, when it comes to EUCs that I've tried, the thinner the tire, like especially those two and a half inch tires, two inch tires, the more the EUC will tilt and the less feedback you will have when turning, especially when doing some performance riding. The next element to keep in mind is the tire height itself. So how much rubber you actually have on the tire. The more a rubber you have, the more comfy the ride will be, but in extreme cases it might also start to feel wobbly. So for example, a low profile tire like you have here on the Nibot Z10, um, also with a different compound and thread, with this you will feel the road a lot more and you will have a lot more feedback than for example on a bigger tire with a sort of softer compound and softer sidewalls like on the veteran Sherman's Kenda tire. But maybe most important of all is the tread itself. Now the tread can vary from tires like 
off-road tires and street tires and this is like the biggest extreme in between those two this tire will feel a little less wobbly it will have sort of more stability at high speed but it won't allow you to make sharp turns and be very agile at lower speeds when looking at the slow-mo comparison between those three wheels, you can see that the off-road tire makes the UC lean the most, making it more vulnerable to scratch the pedals. I can turn the sharpest and the most aggressive on the wide, low-profile tire on the Z10, followed by the Michelin City Pro Street tire on my Sherman. Now, also in off-road tires, there is a difference if you have a wider rim, Wider wind will typically be more agile and allow you for sharper cornering, while a narrower rim will have less tra tram tracking and will not allow you to do the sharp cornering because you'll just scratch uh, the pedals. You can also have a different width of the knobs here. So with the S20 tire that was in factory, I had a terrible time riding on it because the knobs were just so far apart. So in general, when the knobs are closer together, you will get more feedback from the tire. Now, on street tires, there might be also different treads. I think also that both of those tire types have is how flat the profile of the tire is. So the more rounded it is, the more, I know, simple it will be to ride, the less tram tracking there will be, the easier it will be to just make simple turns. But the more flat this profile will be, like on the Z10, which we have in the back, the more feedback you will have in turns, the sharper turns you can do, but it will be a lot more of an effort. At low speeds, with this flatter tire profile, it will be also easier to make sharper turns. Naturally, the compound also plays a role. The harder the compound, the more durable it will be against getting flats, or when going downstairs, you won't have that many problems. But the softer the compound, you will have more grip and especially in cold, colder weather, you will have just not that slippery of a tire. But harder compound or softer compound doesn't necessarily mean that you will have more or less grip. Generally, the quality of the compound is very important. So like on a Michelin City Pro, you will have just a lot more quality and better um, compounds equals better grip than, for example, in a Chinese tire, Chinese stock tire on your EUC. Last but not least, uh, there is also a difference with the tube you might get for your EUC. So the more of a motorcycle type tube you have, the more like stiffer or more robust uh, of a tube you will have, uh, the less the sidewall will, will compress and therefore you will have more feedback while uh, riding. At the same time, it will also get a little less comfy. Now let's get to the term I was talking about quite a bit in a video, which is called tram tracking or train tracking. It's kind of hard to show this phenomenon on video, but essentially what happens is that the EUC wants to stay perpendicular to the surface that it is riding on. If the road has an angle or a slope to the side, then the EUC will force you to turn onto the side of the road, which is lower. If the road has many bumps or ruts, then you will have a hard time steering your EUC if that EUC has a lot of tram tracking. Electric unicycles with wider street tires like 16 by 3 inch or 18 by 3 inch um, of general tire diameter, so until the edge of the tire, typically exhibit more tram tracking. This phenomenon might be further enhanced by harder sidewalls, stiffer sidewalls, a flatter tire profile or a low profile tire like we can see here on the Z10. I'm struggling. The faster you go, the stronger this effect will be. If you want to have this effect minimized by a big margin, it's best to take either a narrower street tire like a 18 by 2.5 inch or 16 by 2.5 inch or a off-road tire. Even wide off-road tires don't exhibit much tram tracking, like we can see here on the Veteran Sherman. A quick solution to tram tracking is also lowering your pressure. So if you ride at a ultra high pressure, you will have more tram tracking than on a lower one. Now let's talk about wobbles. And while there might be many reasons for wobbles uh, when riding, I will talk mostly about the ones that depend on your position and the tire. Now usually wobbles happen if you either have a bump and land a bit sideways or if your weight distribution on the EUC isn't right or if you just don't hold the EUC tight enough between your legs. 
On the video you can see here, I artificially create the wobbles by putting my weight onto my heels while accelerating. So putting more weight into the front or distributing it evenly on your feet should help with getting out of the wobble and make sure to also grab your EUC tightly. Alternatively, you can also just try to break and come to a stop. In this case, you will need to put the weight on your heels and also push your ass in the back to mitigate the wobbles. Typically, off-road tires are less prone to wobbles. With all of that said, the best remedy for wobbles is just to keep on riding and after a thousand, two thousand kilometers, you might just forget about them. Lower tire pressure also makes the wheel less prone to wobbles. Another important consideration is the tire pressure. So you might have the same tire, but it will behave really differently when it's at high pressure or when it's at low pressure. Now, typically with those tires, it's written on them to have between 35 and 45 PSI. Some of them, like the off-road tire of the Sherman, will tell you 30 PSI. But generally, I wouldn't advise you to go below 30 because then you have the danger of um, just damaging on your rim, on a curb, on a pothole. The heavier you are, the more pressure you will need in your tire. But this will also result in the wheel feeling uh, more nimble and more agile. And you'll be able to take sharper turns, especially also at low speed, you'll feel a bigger difference. Maybe you'll also get more range. So typically with my devices, I try to keep them at around 30 35, 40 psi, uh, sometimes also above, but then also the ride will suffer a bit, like it will get like just like really, really bouncy. So you will need to find your best middle ground, but just make sure you don't run too low of a pressure in your wheel. All right, so now you've heard a lot of information about tires, their properties, etc., etc. But in the end, the biggest difference will be bef between a street tire and a off-road tire. So let me just really quickly elaborate to you on that. The street tire will be better in the city as you probably thought, but it's important to know that unless it's muddy or sandy, this tire will perform actually exceptionally well off-road. It exceeds in the turning capabilities and it's also less possible to scratch a pedal when you are using this tire. It will require uh, a bit more uh, of a learning curve and for sharper turns and riding at speed it might be a bit more difficult or challenging for you uh, to keep it in place and not get any wobbles. And it will also require more effort to turn sharply at speed. But then if you do it, it will feel very rewarding and awesome. So I think that the street tire is best for tricks, for performance riding. It's sort of like a sports motorcycle. In terms of the off-road tire, it is more for like comfy riding, getting from point A to B without any stress or hassle. It has less train tracking. It will just go sort of where you want it to. And if you want the added bonus of sometimes going off-road and being in mud or your I don't know, environment is just going through the woods, then yes, the off-road tire will be better. It will be more stable at speed and will require less effort to turn at those speeds and it will feel also a bit more secure. It will be also loud compared to this, which is completely silent. In the end, uh, for my use case, after a long time of riding UCs in, in, in the city, I choose the street tire and preferably a wide one because I just love this performance aspect of UC. But I will also include a list of recommendations, which tires are cool, which tires are used, and which sizes are the appropriate ones for any given UC that's out there now on the market. Now, this will be also an extensive list, but um, I'll try to include it in the description. So, if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more terrific content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Monster Segway.